A Karen slapped and pushed me because I was ignoring her and then she got what was coming. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications turned on. I am an 18 year old male born completely deaf and mute. Also, I am partially blind in my left eye. I live with my sister who's 28 years old who has been taking care of me since our parents died. Recently, she got married and went on her honeymoon, so I am on my own for a few weeks. This happened yesterday. Usually, whenever I go out, I am accompanied by my sister due to my disability, but now she is on her honeymoon and I had to go out alone. There was a new supermarket open in our area and I needed some items, so I decided to go there and grab them. My bad for wearing a red color shirt, almost similar to the employees working there. But if you look closely, you could see that it was not the uniform. I was at the electronics section looking for some batteries when I see an old man struggling to get some DVDs at the top shelf. Since I am tall, I helped him. He thanked me. I can do lip reading and he went on his way. Then I began looking for the batteries. That's when I felt someone grab my left wrist. I turned around and a woman in her late 40s slapped me. She was speaking something, but I couldn't follow as her lips were flapping too fast. However, I I was able to catch some words like you, ignore, job, etc. So I signed to her that I am deaf. Apparently this was a wrong move because she became more irate towards the signs. Again, she was yelling something but I couldn't catch anything. So I grabbed my notebook and start writing that I am deaf and mute. Before I could finish, she grabbed my notebook and pen and threw them away. Then she slapped me again and pushed me to the ground. Luckily, by this time a store employee came to see what the commotion was about. He saw me on the ground and helped me up. Then he asked me what happened. Before I can sign to him, Karen starts to yell at the employee. I don't know what she said as she was not facing me. After she finished, I signed to an employee that I cannot hear or speak. Fortunately, he understood and explained this to the lady, but she is still not convinced. She tries to assault me again, but I moved away. Then I wrote and showed the employee to call the cops on her. The employee nodded and called the cops. The Karen tried to run away, but the security guard caught her. The police arrived in about 10 minutes. They first talked to the employee who explained the situation about how Karen assaulted me because she mistook me for a store employee. One police officer comes and speaks to me and I understood that he wanted my version of events. So I wrote everything down and showed it to the officer. Then they went to check the CCTV footage. They came back and asked me if I wanted to press charges. I gladly said yes. Karen was then placed in handcuffs and given a free ride in the back of a police cruiser. The manager then explained to me that the Karen thought I worked there and that she became angry that I ignored her. She had been standing on my left side, so obviously I couldn't see her. The store manager offered me a 50% discount on the products. I texted my sister about the events that happened, and she was livid. Oh, and did I mention my sister is a lawyer? She told me that she herself will be handling the case and would see to it that Karen would get maximum time. The court date is around 40 days from now. Was I the jerk? This story shows experiencing a Karen from a totally different perspective. I mean, he was completely caught off guard because she was probably screaming at him and he wasn't even aware of her presence until she physically interacted with him via the slap, obviously. I mean, how can you not know when somebody starts doing sign language that that is sign language, especially if they're doing it proficient and in a well-practiced way? It's not like he's just throwing up random symbols. This one's pretty sad and I'm glad that he is actually pressing charges because as a lot of people point out, sometimes quite often in a lot of these stories, the OP doesn't press charges, but in this case, his sister is an attorney. So you can't just have people going around slapping and pushing people because they think they are employees. And if they are employees, does that make it right? Of course not. Because her whole excuse is totally ridiculous. I thought he was an employee. So therefore he wasn't responding to me. So therefore I acted the way that I did. Nope, that does not fly. So let me know what you would do in this situation down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Karen versus the lady who is my hero. So for context, I live in a city that was ranked one of the top places in the United States to retire. So an older person asking for small favors from strangers is super common. This happened yesterday. I was shopping at Walmart and a tiny little old lady, who I'm guessing was in her 90s, asked me, Excuse me, can you please grab that bag of flour for me? I said, sure. I grabbed it put it in the kid seat in front of her cart so the cashier can scan it without having to lift. She thanked me and we chatted for maybe 30 seconds. Then behind me, I hear a different woman's voice who sounded annoyed. Okay, you've spent enough time on her. Where is the coffee creamer? I turned and said, what? As soon as I saw her face, it dawned on me that I am going to have a Karen moment. Also super common in my area. The Karen says, it's your job to help out all the customers, not just her. The old lady says, 
he, he doesn't work here. He's just helping an old lady because his parents raised him, right? There was a noticeable pause. Then the old lady just turned and walked away. In my head, she was strutting off with a half-finished cigarette in her mouth and pixelated glasses, walking into the sunset while the Mandalorian end credit music plays. I'm not sure if this is a you-had-to-be-there moment, but I have been laughing ever since. Was I the jerk? Why would anyone get jealous of you trying to help out an elderly person? I mean, everyone is going to be elderly if you live long enough, so why get so annoyed by that? I mean, it's not like the Karen in this situation had been asking and she was ignored. She just didn't like that this person was helping this elderly lady in general. It has nothing to do with the fact that she didn't get any help herself. Anyway, I like the dink meme explanation of how the old lady walked away, but let me know what you would do if you're in this situation down below. Am I the jerk for not asking my mother-in-law nicely to hand over the baby for feeding? Hi, I'm a new mom and I had my son five weeks ago. My husband's parents have been staying with us and things have been super overwhelming. My mother-in-law has the habit of taking the baby and refusing to give him back to me. She'd say I'm deliberately ruining her time with him. My son needs feeding every two hours and she basically makes me beg to have her hand him over so I could feed him. Last night at 10 p.m. my mother-in-law had my son in her arms while sitting on the couch with my husband and his dad. I was exhausted. The baby started crying and I told my mother-in-law to hand him over to me so I could feed him. She refused and I kept asking. My husband starts talking about what a whiny little girl I was to complain that our son is receiving love and cuddles and how I'm using feeding as an excuse to keep the baby away from his mom. I ignored him and told his mom to hand over the baby and she refused and she said I needed to wait a little longer. I got angry at this point. My husband said I could take the baby after I asked his mom nicely. This had me seething. I meanly told his mom to stop being annoying and overbearing and hand him over to me. She looked at me shocked and hurt. She She handed over the baby and ran into the guest room and my husband gave me a look then followed her and stayed inside to comfort her. He came into the room while I was feeding my son and started yelling about how disrespectful I was to speak to his mom this way and treat her poorly when all she's doing is showing our son more love than I do. I told him how she's been taking the baby for hours and preventing me from feeding him properly. He said that number one, our son isn't an object for me to act like I own him and number two, his mom was doing nothing wrong at all. And number three, I should have asked nicely instead of being a B to his mom and making her cry. I started crying and yelled that I'd go back to my mom's place if his parents stay here any longer. And he yelled back and said, shut the front door. You're only acting up because you don't want my parents around. F is wrong with you. Then walked out. I felt terrible thinking that maybe I was rude to his mom, but I also think that I hit my limits here. Am I the jerk for not asking her nicely like my husband wanted? If the baby needs to be fed every two hours and the baby needs to be fed. That should be something that's clear amongst everyone in the entire house, regardless of what people want to do with the baby, if they want to cuddle with him or they want to do whatever. I don't know how serious of a rule that is, but if it is something that must be done, it's got to be done. And the whole entire purpose of the parents being there is to help them out during the early days of taking care of the baby, but it sounds like it's making the whole process worse for the OP, the mother here. It sounds like she would have an easier time with the baby if they just weren't there. So them being there to help is very counterproductive from the sounds of it. The insults the husband gave the OP, the wife here, are very specific. He calls her a whiny little girl and how dare he complain that his son is receiving love and cuddles. It sounds like there's weird layers of resentment that have already brewed way before this story even started. One of the top responses says your husband is prioritizing his mother's emotional wants over your five week old baby's physical needs. Get out now. This is only going to escalate. He's already shown his own child isn't his top priority. That is not normal that is terrifying. But do you think it's terrifying? Let me know what you would do if you're in this situation down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for embarrassing a lunch thief at work? I've been getting some flack for this, so I really want to clear this up. I recently started a job where I work in a small studio. There are several others in the building. Think open plan office with sections assigned to each studio. The person I had an altercation with doesn't work from my studio, just FYI. I eat lunch around one-ish and most Most people eat at 12. I came down early to eat at 12. I made coffee and while at the counter noticed my Tupperware in the sink was empty. Imagine my surprise when I turned around and saw a man I didn't know sitting down at the table with my food on his plate. He had just stuck it in the microwave. Acting rashly, I was mad. I sat down next to him and said, hey, 
That looks good. Mind if I try it? Then before waiting for an answer, I yanked the plate away from him and snatched his fork out of his hand. He just blinked in shock, as did the other people there as I started eating. He then quite loudly asked what I was doing and I replied, huh, you know, this was actually much better when I first cooked it. It probably lost some flavor in the fridge. He caught on quickly that it was my food and went a little bit red. I then asked him where he got the gall to steal someone else's lunch and then asked them what they were doing when they took it back. He stuttered out some nonsense about not knowing it was mine and I replied with, well, you knew it wasn't yours, right? He just mumbled something like an apology and I said, it's no problem. It was nice that he warmed it up for me at least in an admittedly jerky tone. And then he just got up and left and the people there just stared in silence. Two of the silent watchers, maybe his mates, I don't know, told me that I was rude to him and that there had been nicer ways to go about it. I told them to think about how they'd feel if someone ate their food before saying they should focus on their lunch and I'll focus on mine. Well, it's been a little awkward at lunch since then, and I have the impression a few people are talking trash about me at work now. Maybe I could have been a little nicer, sure, but I don't think I was wrong. But please tell me, was I the jerk? I think these type of situations always boil down to, is he stealing food out of necessity and just somebody that needs help and doesn't know how to communicate that? Or is it somebody who's stealing food out of laziness and he could easily get his own food or make his own food or bring his own food and he just chooses not to and starts to eat other people's food. Neither one of them give him a free pass to do whatever he wants but in one case the circumstances are vastly different because if he's able to communicate that then maybe other people can help him get back on his feet if that is the case but most of the time it's the laziness option between the two at least most of the time in these stories. And if that is the case in this story in particular, I don't think there's anything wrong with how the OP handled this. He didn't go totally out of his way to embarrass this guy or start going out and telling people. He just handled his business, did what he had to do in the moment, and this is probably never going to happen again. But let me know what you think. Jerk or not a jerk and why down below. Am I the jerk for what I told my mother-in-law when she asked to be in the delivery room? My husband, who's 33 years old, and I, 30 years old, are expecting a baby boy. We're barely catching up with preparation and getting everything ready. His mom, kind of a busy body type but can be helpful at times, invited us for dinner and she said she has an important request to make. She brought her request up at the dinner table and blatantly said that she wanted to be in the delivery room with me when I give birth. I was taken aback by her request. I really thought it had something to do with the nursery or diaper brand. I I said I was sorry, but only my mom and my husband will be there. She made a face, got quiet for a while, then brought it up again. Just kept pushing, saying that she is as much of a grandmother as my mom and that she just wanted to be there for support and get the opportunity to see her grandbaby's first moments. My husband sided with her. I just stared at her and said, it's all right. You can have the opportunity to be in the delivery room when it's your son who's giving birth. Everyone stopped eating and my mother-in-law left the table in an instance. My husband had me get up, although I wasn't finished with dinner, but he said we should leave. In the car, he lost it on me. What brain cell made me think it was a good idea to tell his mom that? I told him his mom kept pushing after I'd already given her an answer. Still, he said this was the most messed up thing he's ever heard me say. I replied that I was just frustrated and didn't mean to hurt her feelings and cause issues. He argued that if I don't want issues, then I should stop making it difficult and just say yes to his mom's request. He then ranted about how it's his son too and then said if his mom isn't allowed in there then he won't be there too. Now, I don't know if he really meant this or if he just said this in the heat of the moment, but it had me fuming. He's been ignoring me when I try to talk to him and act like I'm not in the room. I think I might have gone too far and created tension by responding inappropriately. So, am I the jerk for what I told my mother-in-law when she asked to be in the delivery room? Man, this is a tough one. Ultimately, it's her choice, no matter what. But the thing that's out of her control beyond the choice is the reaction of others to her choice. So how the mother-in-law is going to treat her from this point forward. And now what's been revealed about how the husband already does treat her because of this. The husband is trying to weirdly strong arm his own wife by saying that if his mom can't be there, he's not going to be there too. When the OP probably very clearly wants the husband to be there for the birth of their child. A lot of people in response to this thought that this is an actual entire deal breaker for the whole relationship. 
relationship, the entire marriage. A lot of times with responses to stuff like this, there's a solution, but on this one, a lot of people went straight for divorce. In fact, some of the top comments said, the reality is that your mother-in-law just did you a favor here because your husband siding with her is showing issues in your marriage and the difficulties you're going to face when it comes to decisions about your pregnancy or your child. I would tell him if he doesn't come to the delivery room when I give birth and if he's not supportive of my decision concerning my body, our marriage will be over and he shouldn't bother coming to the hospital at all because he will have to wait until I go back to my parents to meet our son. Go to a lawyer and prepare for a divorce just in case and try to get an appointment with a therapist to help you through all of it. To which was followed up with another one saying OP needs to prepare herself for the worst outcome. Mother-in-law literally ambushed her by making that request in front of everyone and not taking no as an answer. There are a million reasons why OP just wants her mother and husband in the delivery room. I agree with your advice. OP should seek a lawyer and be prepared. They want to play like kids, but someone needs to remind them all no means no and actions require consequences. Yikes. So let me know if you think that this whole situation is grounds for divorce or not and jerk or not a jerk and why. If you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure to hit that notification bell so you actually get notified of the videos so you can listen to them in the background. Or if you're more of a podcast type of person, check out the Am I the Jerk podcast on all the major podcast platforms. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.